All right, everyone, this is the video for making the drum leaf binding. So the previous video was preparing all the materials and uh, now we should have your, your materials ready to go and you should have your text pages and your boards. So this is where we're gonna start. We're gonna be gluing these pieces together. And this is the part where you're gonna need your binder clips. So what you wanna do is stack up all of your folded folios so that the folds are together and you wanna put an end sheet, a single end sheet on each end. And then you wanna put a board on either side of that stack so that you have your folded edges here and your board and you're gonna jog it all up together what I normally do is just really I'm focusing on the spine. So I want this to be very flat. So I'm gonna, you know, I'm looking head and tail to make sure that's flat. This is another time where maybe knocking it up to uh, a 90 degree angle is helpful. And then also using just the tabletop to line things up. And then when you get it where you want it, where everything is even, you can check by picking it up and looking at, at the folds. I mean, I'll show the camera, but I'm going to have to, I can tell that it's a little shifted. So I'm going to keep doing that until that's flat at the spine. And then I'm going to take my clips and I'm going to put them maybe about a half inch, maybe a whole inch down from, this is the spine away. Because I don't want to do it right up against, because I don't want to pinch it. Okay, because we're gonna be gluing back here. And I, I just don't wanna have like a little cigar shape where it's tight and tight, and then there's like this bulge in the center. So that's why I push it down a little bit, maybe an inch away, and then put one on the other side. And if you had a much thicker book, you'd probably need some different clips uh, because these, they're really pretty strong. And I'm actually backing it down a little bit more away because I feel like it's squeezing it too much. So that's, it's actually more than an inch. So if you look at that, it's like an inch and a quarter, almost an inch and a half, kind of in the middle. That's where I'd say it is. It's like in the middle of the, of the short width of the boards. So this is my spine. And it feels pretty flat. It looks flat. That's what you want like that. Okay. So um, before I start putting glue on, and this is my double stick tape, we're just going to put glue here and we're gonna put a strip of Japanese paper here on the spine to align it. Um, and then we're gonna put our double stick tape later at the end after it's dried. Um, and that's just the way that I've started doing it. I used to put it together a different way where I'd put double stick tape on every page and then I'd put them together one by one, but this works a lot better. Um, it's just a lot cleaner, and so we're going to do it this way. So once you've got your uh, folded edges lined up and everything looks good and everything looks flat, um, you can take your glue and you're going to glue up the spine. But oh, I know what I was getting ready to do. Before you do that, so we prepped a little piece of Japanese paper. And now before I put the glue on, I want to go ahead and cut down this piece that will be the size of the spine. So it's like a rectangle that is this wide and this long. So just you're cutting a little rectangle of Japanese paper that's going to cover the spine and it needs to be the exact size. So what I usually do is just lay my strip on top of the book and then make a tick mark right at the edge, even just a little inside that board and then I can, sometimes I can like just fold it and find the edge of the board and make a little tick mark just inside that fold. And then the height, I can kind of just lay it on top and then come down here and make a little tick mark. And I really want that to be even slightly shorter than the height so that it's not gonna overhang the top and the bottom. So that's my little tick marks that I made for this. And they're pretty small but you can see what I'm gonna cut. So I'll choose my ruler and I'm gonna turn it so that there's more material under my ruler. So I can hold it in place. And again, need a sharp knife. I 
And then here at the bottom, I'm gonna use my triangle so that I'm cutting this square. Making sure, and I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna really lay my triangle on top of that, of that mark so that I'm cutting it a little bit shorter. That's the size that I need. So now what I'm gonna do is glue that up, but I'm ready. I don't have to like lay this down in some awkward way uh, while I'm cutting that. So it's, it's prepped. Just double checking that I'm gluing on the correct side. You can sort of tell because this side is narrower because it's not, there's no fold. This side's a little bit thicker and that's what we're gonna glue. Okay, so there's my glue, here's my glue brush. And I'm just gonna glue this spine. And what I wanna do is just get the glue on there and let it get between the folds. You know, put a good amount, but don't have it dripping down the side of the boards. You don't want that. Get a good amount of glue on there. And I'm letting it go between the pages. That's what I want. I'm almost filling those gaps between the folds with glue. And now I'm just kind of wiping it off with the brush. I'm going to set this because I don't have my thing of water and I'll probably go get that in a minute and I'll come back so that because I'm going to need my glue throughout this process. And now I'm just I picked up that little strip of Japanese paper and I'm laying it on the spine. Like that and you can see it's a little short, but that's actually what I want. In fact, I'm going to shift it down just a little bit at the top. And lift it and pull it down just a tiny bit so that it's not overhanging the top. It's not like, like it was, but I just want to make sure it's not. And I have a few seconds here to adjust. I, you know, I was able to peel that back up. I did because I didn't push down hard on it. And now take my bone folder. Where I put my other bone folder, but I'll find it in a minute. Um, but this is my other, I have a bunch of different ones. So I'll just kind of bone gently, gently. I'm barely brushing that with the bone folder. So I'm not pulling it out of place. But I do want to put some, just a little bit of pressure behind it. And so see how, as I work this down, I can start to see the folds and that's what I want. But I'm trying not to push with all just one sweep because I don't want to accidentally pull the paper off. And another thing you can do, and if you do this with one of your stencil brushes, you can use a stencil brush to push your paper down. I have one set aside that has glue on it. So I don't use this to do my push wad. This one is for this purpose. I'll just take a stencil brush and you can pounce it down. And this is nice because uh, Japanese paper has a lot of long fibers in it, and these fibers can help hold this book together. So I'm kind of pouncing it and pushing that paper down between. If you can see how that's going in there. Okay, like that. And now, I can put my piece of, it's not cambric, but it's the flange piece that's going to go on the book as though it's the cambric. Normally we would use that cloth. So I'm gonna glue this, this is gonna get glued up completely and it's gonna lay across the spine like this. And we're actually gonna, this is gonna get glued up completely and get glued down tight in one step, okay? Later when we're making the next book that we make, this gets put on in a different way. So this is for the drum leaf. We're doing it like this, but when we do the multi-section flat bag, there's a flange very similar. It's the same material. This would be, like I said before, this would normally be cambric and not mulberry. Uh, but on the multi-section multi flat bag, you do not glow this down in, in this step. You actually just glue it onto the spine. And I'm I'll talk about that again when we get there, but I'm just warning you ahead of time because it's a mistake that people make. 
But right now, that's going to get glued up. So I'm going to set my book down for a moment. I'm not going to take that off yet. I'm going to grab a piece of newsprint to glue on. And I'm done with the stencil. I'm, well, I might use it for the flange. We'll see. Now I'm going to, so you saw how I sort of laid it on there, how I wanted it. And it doesn't have to be perfect, you know, but you want to get it pretty even. And then you're going to glue it down and kind of walk it down like this. It's not glued up yet. I'm just kind of miming the process so you can see. But then I'm going to glue this out and push it down. Okay. So you want to glue this up. Japanese paper is so thin, it's hard to glue sometimes because it's so, so thin. It's hard to pick it back up again. And I'm just trying to center that head and tail and center it side to side on the book or on that spine. And it's a little off center, not going to worry about it. Pull it over a little tiny bit if I need to. This looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to push down at the spine and then I'm going to set the book down and walk it down. So I'm using my fingers to kind of walk it up to the edge and then I'm pushing down where it overlaps the board and lays onto the board. And I just want it tight. There's no air underneath. And this is where if I want, I could come back because it's mulberry again. You can do that little brush it down tight, pounce it maybe just a little bit. Be careful with this process because you can actually get the brush sticky and pull it back up as you're like pouncing back. It'll make a little bubble underneath. So make sure you're not doing that. Okay. All right, so that's done. Oh, <laughs> I just realized I do this every time. I forgot to put the little covered corners on, but that's okay because we can still do it. And it's you might as well learn how to do it this way. It's better if you, before you even put your boards on, you go ahead and make your little corner covers like this one. If you go ahead and do that before you put them on, you can see that the boards would have both corners on there, both corners on there like that, and then you put your boards on. And it it's easier. The only thing I don't like about it, and maybe it's like subconsciously I'm thinking about this, is that little piece of paper kind of holds it away a little bit. And so when you put those clips on, it almost makes it a little bit thicker than it would be if you don't have them on there in advance. Um, that's the reason I'm going to use today as to why I always forget to do this step, but we're still going to do the step and I'm going to show you how to do it. If you go ahead and put your boards on, it's still doable. It's not really a problem. It's just a little, little awkward compared to how it would be. Um, but I'm going to do that next. So I'm going to pause the video, come back. I'm going to get my little water to put my brush in and then we will do that step before we move on. Okay. All right. Let me pause for a moment. Okay, so this step is just to make a more finished edge like this on top of the book like that right here. And so that's what we're getting ready to do now. So I had cut this book cloth to use for my spine and I want a little matching piece. I saved that little scrap that I cut off the bottom or whatever, wherever it was. Um, the, the thing that's helpful is to know which way the grain is going on the piece. And on this one, it's like this. This is not that big a deal, but it makes it a little bit easier to fold over. I made little marks on there. Can't see, they're just like little uh, grain marks. So I, what I wanna do is cut a little rectangle or a little square that's gonna let me fold over the top here. I need four of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay it on my mat. And I'll just cut four. Let's see, how should I do this? 
don't have an inch each. So I guess I'll just kind of eyeball it like this. Divide this into four pieces, approximate. So these are too wide and I'm going to make them about an inch wide. And I just, I really want to just make sure at least on one edge, there's a straight edge. I don't want it rough, even though it's going to go on over the top of the board like that, it's going to get folded and you'll only see the top. You just want to make sure that this is clean on, on the side so that you can do that. So I'm just cutting little pieces. They're probably about, let's see how big these things are. They're like three quarters by an inch. That's approximately how big they are. So the three quarters is this measurement and the inch is that one. You can see they're not identical. This one's crooked, so I'm going to straighten this one up. Just trim off an edge here. So I've got four of these now like that. And you can see they're not exactly the same. That one's probably the biggest one. That's fine. It doesn't matter. Okay, so now I'm going to take the clips off because I have to open the book to do this. You might want, if you don't um, do it ahead of time, well, you're not going to because you're not going to know until you're watching the video. Um, you have to, I would let this dry for like 10 minutes. Um, and I would say it's probably been that long since I stopped gluing. So I think we're okay because you are going to have to open the book like this uh, to do this step because this is where they're going to go here, 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 and here. All right, so there's that little scrap piece. So we'll just one at a time do this. So I'm going to glue this out, this little piece, and that's hard to do. You know, it's hard to glue a little swatch like that. You can do it. And you're going to open the book and up at this corner, you're going to slide this little piece into place and you're going to push it up against the end sheet. You want to get it into that little uh, valley here like that. And then you're going to walk it over the top you can then, once you get it in place, you can close the book and then just fold it over the top. And what you're trying to do is just cover the board at the top here. And you want up against the spine, you really want that flush. So try to get it up to the corner. And this is what makes this a little bit difficult is that the book's already together. So it's hard to kind of shimmy it back in there, but you can get it in there well enough to where it's it's pretty close to the edge and you're not going to see the material. You're not going to see the um, board underneath. And then you can take your bone folder and just gently push that down. And make sure there's no glue on it and then just press it down here and on the inside. And I'm trying not to fold that back. You can see when I'm opening it that I'm trying not to pull back on that because this is you know, it's together, uh, but it'll get better as we go along. And then when we put our finishing uh, double stick tape on there, it's really going to be fine. And uh, so, again, just make sure I'm just jogging it back to make sure I'm not accidentally shimmying it back there because we're not using a cambric. It's a little bit risky. Okay, so I'm going to glue this piece. If 
I don't know. You can start it on the outside too if you want. If you feel like it's easier to get it in position from the front, that's fine. I don't know. I feel like I can get it into that little groove better on the inside. That's why I do it like that. And then I feel like I like that little step of closing it. It kind of holds it in place. And then if I need to shimmy it over, I can do that on the outside. Using the bone folder. And I'm knocking the corner just to make sure the material's down with the bone folder. I just kind of knock that. Okay, we got two more to do. And this is, like I say, an extra step, but it really makes a difference with the finished book. It looks a lot cleaner, a lot neater. And it seems very finicky, and it is. If I was making an addition, I absolutely would be sure to do this step as one of my steps that I do kind of in an assembly line, I would make the boards and then I would cover the board corners as just a separate step because to do this on every book is just not be a good idea. That's it's because it is more time consuming. It's faster to do it uh, before you put the boards on. So, as, you know, as far as how far it comes over, it really doesn't matter. Um, or I haven't found it to matter. Maybe there is some difference, but. So what I do like about putting it on later is that you, the width just seems more manageable and you can figure, you know, you're putting on the right size, Japanese paper, um, because the book isn't being held apart by this thickness of cloth, I guess. Um, so, you know, a little detail, but no big deal. Okay, so now we've got those corners on. And so now what we've got to do is make the spine uh, piece. So we're gonna need the card and the book cloth. So we need the Bristol card and the book cloth for this step. So this is what we're getting ready to make for that little baby book. It goes on there like that. So we're getting, we're gonna make this spine piece right now. Okay, so what we need to do is we have to figure out the width of this so that we can make a little spine piece to fit that's gonna go on here. So the tricky part of this is that, this is where I like to have like a little scrap of paper rather than, um, and I just tore off some of my trash paper there, rather than trying to measure with the card, which I, I also have done this, but I tend to make make the card too thick if I do that. So just double checking my grain is long and it is on this piece because I want the grain to be running down the spine length. Um, I'm actually gonna just take this strip of paper and fold it across. There's so many different ways to, to get this measurement. This is what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna make a tick mark right at the corner of the board, just with my pencil. And then that tick mark is what I'm gonna transfer to the board. So I am gonna measure from the edge and then I'm gonna transfer that tick mark. 
to my card. Just need a couple of lines. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that, that width off. Set here. Lay down to the first mark and line up the second one. And then cut. Okay. And then for the height, so that's a I still a very useful piece of card that I can use for other stuff. So it's not it's not scrap. This is scrap. So now I need to cut the height as it's the same height as the boards. So often what I do there is just lay the piece onto the board and then make a tick mark right at the, the board height. And then use my triangle to make that square. So I just line it up get to the tick mark and then hold it down tight. Just make sure you hold it down tight because it does want to slide. It's a little thin piece of card under there. Okay. Feels right, I'm just checking it to the height. And now, okay, so this is the thing with this. You really want this piece right now when I'm checking this, it's like exactly the same width. I want it to be slightly smaller. And here's why I'll try to explain this. So when I glue this down, you can actually kind of see this. If you look here, um, there is a little bit of a gap where the fold is, where the book cloth is up against the board or this uh, folder card. That little gap makes the spine piece too thick. And so I have found that, you know, I can't exactly allow for it when I'm cutting it. I mean, especially when I'm just making one, if I were making an, an addition, I would work this out and then cut all my pieces the same. But I like to just trim it. So I'm going to shave off a hair. And I really hope this blade is sharp enough. I'm not looking around. Do I have a better blade? But I don't think I've changed either one of them lately. But I'm going to go ahead and just do it and hope for the best. But I want to hold this down very tight because I'm shaving off just almost like a thickness of the card itself. That's all I'm cutting off. And now when I come back and check this, it's almost like I should be able to see a little bit of the spine underneath when I check it and even just by feel, I can feel that that is smaller than the board. So I think I'm good, but I just want it to be slightly skinnier than the width of the spine. So I feel like I'm good. I, I checked it against it. It seems a little bit smaller and that's all I want. It's just a tiny bit smaller. Okay. All right, so now what's gonna happen is this is going to get glued to the center of this piece of book cloth. And then we're gonna glue the top and the bottom and fold it over so you can see the finished piece. You can see what we're getting ready to do. So I'm gonna glue this out, glue the spine piece or the uh, Bristol folder card. Just glue this. And I'm gonna lay it down in the center here. And again, this is gonna get trimmed. So I'm not super worried about it being perfectly centered, but you know, trying to do a pretty good job there like that. And then I'm gonna push it down and I can bone fold it down here, squeeze out. And if there's glue, a lot of glue squeezing out, just wipe it with your finger. And it's good to have a cloth nearby so you can wipe your fingers if you need to. And then we are going to glue this like that and then fold it over. 
So let me get another piece of newsprint. There's all my little samples out of the way here. All my little offcuts. I'm gonna hold on to that. I might use it. And I'm gonna glue this and fold it over. So I'll do one side at a time. That was sort of a little bit too much glue. I'm gonna wipe that off. And I am kind of overlapping uh, the tip of the folder card there, no problem. And I am sort of dabbing, you know, making sure I get glue on the edge, just a little edge. So then move this out of my way while I do the work. So and I, it's not very wide, so I'm trying not to pull down on it. I'm just trying to, you know, fold it right there and then fold straight out. Trying not to pull down. That's a very easy thing to do because it's so narrow. Using my, oh, there's my bone folder. It's up against the edge and blending in there. Okay, now I've got my better bone folder for this. And if glue squeezes out on your mat, just give it a wipe. I'm pushing up against the edge of the bristle there. You can see that in the light that, that you can see better. So that's what I'm doing is I'm just pushing up against that and then pushing out at the edge and glue is squeezing out. That's okay. This is the interior. I'm just really trying to make sure I don't get glue on the outside too. What I've done. That is what it looks like on the outside for right now. Uh, and now I'm going to do the other end. Bring this back again. You know, you can slide it around a little bit at first because it's gluey. All right, so now after that, you can see this is kind of messy looking, but what we're going to do is we're going to trim this so that it's square. You can look at this one again. You can see how it's even on both sides. So it really depends on how much book cloth you want to show. I talked about this a little bit when I was doing the demo. Um, so you can see the difference. This is like three quarters of an inch and this is like a quarter inch. Um, and this is when I was talking about making the cover paper wide enough if you want a small amount of book cloth to show. If you want a larger amount, um, you can make it the size of the board and know that you're going to have a turn in that's going to be that big. So you'd have a piece of paper out to here if you did, if you did it this wide, that makes sense. But if I did this, I might have a little bit of a problem when I try to turn in there if I only have this much of a turn in. So just be aware of those types of things. For this, so that is gonna determine how, how wide I want this to be. So, I, I mean, I would suggest maybe not doing less than half an inch, even if you're gonna cover up half of that. Um, we're gonna be tipping this on when we cover it. It's not glued down tight. You can't see this, what I'm talking about, but there's air under there. Can't see it on this one either, but there's air underneath here. It's not glued down tight. Um, You'll, you'll see when we do it. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, I, I like five eighths. Um, so I, that's what I do a lot. <coughs> and I think that's what I'm going to do here. It's just, so I'm going to use tick marks. I also have like a little ruler that is that width and I use that often, but for you guys don't have that. Most people don't. 
And so I'm not going to do it for this. I'll, I'll just make the marks. So five eighths. And then another one down here. So I'm just, I'm lining up the zero right at the edge of the folder card. And then I make my five eighths to mark. The other way. And do the same thing. Five eighths. Okay. And then I'm just going to trim that. This way. All right. So there's my piece. And now I can put this kind of test it onto my book. So I'm going to fold up against just folding that little spine, folding the book cloth up against the card. So I'm just like pushing and folding as I go. And then sometimes I'll even use my bone folder to kind of push tightly against the fold and then bone fold it down. Yeah. 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 And this is where I can kind of check it against this. So I kind of put it in place. And you can see that's actually too wide. Really, that's a little bit too wide. So, you know, that just goes to show you what I was talking about. You see what I'm talking about? It, it's, I mean, it's very slight, it's not terrible but it's just a little bit wider than I want it to be. So I really should have cut that spine piece smaller, even skinnier than I thought. When I put this all together and it's all dry, it's actually gonna be fine, but just style-wise, I don't really like that little kick out on each side. So if my spine piece was a little bit narrower, that wouldn't have happened. It would have been flush. Um, let's see if I, it's the same on both sides. Sometimes it's not. Yeah, it's the same. So I'm actually kind of folding it a little bit tighter, you know, like that. But that's that trick. That's that thing I was talking about where it make that spine smaller than the width here. So if I really hated this and couldn't live with it, if it was way bigger than this, if it was like an eighth of an inch too big, I'd be like, no. And I would recut the piece and make another spine. This is within the realm of, eh, okay. If I were making an addition and I was gonna make a bunch of these, I would absolutely make a skinnier spine because this is not, this is not how I want it to be. Let me show you the difference. This one's right. See how square that is? And see how that one has a little bit of a wedge to it? And I don't like that as well. Um, that and that, you know, so it's like, it's not a 16th too big, but it's a 32nd of an inch too big. You know, I'm gonna live with it for today, but just be aware, you know, when you're making your spine piece that that's what's can, what can happen. If you, if, you, if you make it the exact size and even just a hair smaller, it needs to be more than a hair. It needs to probably be like a 32nd of an inch uh, smaller, so. All right, so now we're gonna put this spine piece on. So what we've gotta do is we're gonna, we want this to be, if you look on the mock-up, let's use this one because I think you can see this a little bit better. Um, when you open the book, you want it to release. See how that releases away from the spine here, how the spine piece pops up. So we wanna make sure that this is not glued down. And so when we put this on, we want it to be an eighth of an inch away when we glue it down. So I'm gonna show you what right now, I'm just going to mark an eighth of an inch at the spine. So this is the spine, I'm measuring over an eighth of an inch and I'm measuring over an eighth of an inch twice. And then I'm gonna connect those and I'm gonna draw a line just on the board and on the paper and not on the book cloth. 
because this is just for guidance with my glue. So I'm going to make a mark like that. And I'm going to do it on both sides of the book, an eighth of an inch and an eighth. Now I'm going to make, I'm going to put the spine piece on and just hold it in place. This is for this edge. I actually want to see, I want to make a little tick mark out here. So I'm going to make a couple of marks just where the edge of that book cloth is. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I just want to be able to see where the edge of the cloth is. Because we've got to glue this down, but we we're basically going to glue out a little rectangle right here. So normally I don't, do this step where I draw the line, but so you guys can see, I'm gonna do this. So I made those little marks and this is where we're gonna glue. So I'll do it on both sides. Like that. So what I've gotta do is I'm gonna basically glue a strip between, I'm gonna glue out the space between these two lines. So it's almost like if you imagine like double stick tape going down right here we're going to use glue. Um, you could probably use double stick tape. This is not quite wide enough. I just don't trust it. And I don't like, I think that glue is going to hold it down tight right here, right where the book cloth overlaps. Uh, oh, actually, we're, gonna, we're not doing that part. But I just want everything down tight. I don't want anything puffy. Um, and so I, that's why I prefer glue for this step. And we're going to be tipping on the spine. So the first thing we're going to do is, again, I'm going to kind of mime what I'm doing just so I know and I know the piece is ready. And then we are going to glue out this little strip. Let me see if I can do it kind of up towards the camera so you can see the lines. So what I'm going to do is I'm just, I'm just going to lay glue in here a little bit like this all the way to the bottom. You have to go on to the book cloth as well. But... Now, mostly what I'm concerned about is glue getting close to the spine because that's where I really want a release. I don't want to go past this line a whole lot out here, but if I do just a tiny bit, it's fine. Out at the on the book side, that's where it's not as important, but it can get messy, so you want to try to control it. But this back here at the at the spine, you really want to stay on that line, and that's why this flat brush is nice for this because it, it can it allows me to do like a sharp glue out. And then out this way, like I said, I'm not as concerned. If I overlap that line, it's okay. So now I take my spine piece and I'm gonna put it on. And what I wanna do is just make sure that it's flush against the spine. So it's like, I want it to be very flush back here and then Centered head and tail, centered head and tail here. But then I'm just pushing it down. You can't really see what I'm doing, but I'm just squeezing it, squeezing it up. And I can feel glue getting on my fingers. So sometimes I'll just take a second and kind of rub it off because that peelable glue that's kind of half dry, that will come off of your book. Wet glue will not. So if I ever feel glue kind of oozing out, I just take a second and just do this, roll it up a little bit, and then it's okay because you can always get that off, but you cannot get like just solid wet glue off. Okay, so you can see kind of how that glue is squeezing out. I'm just brushing and pulling it away and then just doing that kind of roll up. And then if it gets on there, I can peel it off, no problem. Kind of half wet glue, so no, no big deal. Okay. And then I can take my bone folder. Ooh, I think I did get some glue on there right there. Mm -hmm. Everything's not going perfect. Sorry, that's just how it is sometimes. Everything's not perfect today. Okay. Got a little bit of glue. So that's what will happen. And that's a stain. That's not going to come off. That's where glue, wet glue is not your friend. 
So it's probably when I was doing this and I didn't realize and I was wiping it on. That'll be the back of the book now. All right, so that's one side and I did bone fold that down tight. And now that, that side's on. So now this side's a little bit easier because it's in place. So now I'm gonna glue it just like we did on the other side, the front or back. Now that's the back because it's messy. And what I'm doing is just putting glue in that little space, just kind of down the middle. And then I can shimmy and work back towards that line. And if you do accidentally overlap that's that line back there, you can always just take your thumb and just wipe it off and then just keep working. And by the time you're ready to put the spine on, it should be dry where you wiped it. It's not that big a deal. But if you're using thin amounts of glue like, like this, you can just wipe it off just like that. And it should be, it shouldn't hold if it's a little bit sticky. It's not gonna hold it, probably, hopefully. <laughs> okay. This is a wide spine, but that's okay. And again, I'm doing that same thing where Pushing down. And again, if I feel the glue, I'm trying to wipe it. And it, this one's easier because once I've kind of got it down, I can now lay the book down and use the bone folder to do this part. My little rubber cement pickup. I don't think I have one out here, but I will, when I get to the end of the video, I will uh, show you this step you can do. So if you've got little bits of dried glue on there, I can show you how to clean that up. We can, that can wait till the book's put together. Okay, so now your spine piece is on there and I would not suggest opening this quite yet because I feel like it's not dry and that would, it might put some pressure and pop it off. Um, so we're not gonna do that step yet. So the next thing we're gonna do, we're almost done here, except to, you know we've still got a bunch of stuff to do as far as putting the double stick tape on. Um, but as far as finishing the covers and all of that, we're almost finished. So I'm gonna do the next step. And that is, we're just rolling through this, going ahead. Uh, this is your cover papers. So the way this is gonna get done, just really want to take a second and figure out again I think I've talked about this when we did the case how much of this do you want to cover and I mean I'll be honest I eyeball things a lot um, but you can also make a couple of tick marks and then just cover up the tick marks with your cloth I mean sorry with the paper so that's something you can do and you can decide what you want to do I really like kind of what I'm doing there it's basically a half inch and I think that's what I'm going to do for this. And then I've got, there's the edge of my board. I've got a lot overhanging. And so I might actually trim this by the, once I glue this down. So all we're going to do right now is tip this on. Let's see if I prefer it like that. No, I like this side. We are going to just glue this edge of the paper, glue, 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 just like a, a quarter inch of glue. And this is going to get drummed on, just tipped on. And I do want to make sure it's pretty centered head and tail because I want to have enough to turn in head and tail here. So you can see enough to turn in on each side. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do now. So that's ready. And then I'm just going to glue this edge. Getting too much glue here. So I'm just gluing about a quarter inch. I just keep going up and down, pulling off glue because I just want a thin, thin coating there. And I'll bring it over. And I could make tick marks if I didn't feel comfortable doing this. But if you feel comfortable, you can just eyeball it on at the distance that you want it to be. And then you're going to match it on the other side. So if you don't feel comfortable doing that, that's fine just make marks. 
And then because it's only that little quarter inch, that's all I'm pushing down. And it's just a really gentle pressure here just to make sure it's in place. Okay, so that's tipped on. And now when I flip the book over, this is where, this is a time where if I wanted to trim this, I could do that. And let's see. Maybe something like that. Sometimes I'll use like a little ruler that's the right size and just trim off. If I have too much uh, paper, which I do there, I'm just gonna trim this. It just makes it, at least it's pretty close to being even to the other edges, the, the head and tail and the foredge. So now that's, that's what it is. So I cut off about a half an inch, a little bit less, three eighths, something like that. Okay, so that's, that's glued on. And now I'm gonna tip on these other edges. So I'm gonna open the book and I'm gonna do that little miter that we did when we did the corner of the case. So I'm gonna pinch it up, but there's no glue on this yet. I'm just like making the little mark. And then I'm gonna take, so I made that little dimple and the dimple is about right there. And I'm gonna cut outside of that, but just at a 45 degree or approximate that like that. And I still have enough material to cover the corner when I glue it up. And that's, that's what I'm concerned with is just leaving that. So that's why I still do that little step, the little dimple step. So I fold it up, find the edge. There's a little dimple there. I cut right outside of that at a 45 degree. Because I'm, I'm not using scissors and I'm using my uh, X-Acto knife, that's why I'm doing that little shape like that. You can just cut straight across too, but this is kind of nice. I don't know, I actually just feel more comfortable. I can pull this way and then pull that way. That's why I'm doing it like that. Okay, so now this is gonna get glued. So what I'm gonna do, just make sure I have a piece that's not, that one's kind of gluey around the edges. So I'm gonna grab a new, better newsprint here because I need to use a piece. So I'm gonna glue this. I think I'm gonna do it at the same time. I don't really need to do it at the same time. I'm gonna uh, do it one at a time, just for really for the video. And just cause I feel like things are not going my way today. <laughs> so I'm gonna do it, you know. I'm not going to do exactly what I think I should do. I'm going to do what I know I should do. Um, so I'm just doing that one end, just glued it up. And I did kind of dab glue at the board. And then I'm using my bone folder to push up at the edge. And then walk it over, I'm turning it over. If you can see what I'm doing there, just doing that turn in. And so the grain of this piece of paper is running long here. And so that's actually hard to fold because the grain is running this way. And so we're folding against the grain, not with the grain. So that's why I was using the bone folder to walk it up to the edge like that. It just felt, I felt a lot of resistance and that's correct. That means my grain direction is right. And then I'm just rotating the book now. I'm gonna bring my little piece back to glue. And then glue this edge. Just be careful here when you're gluing that you're not slopping a bunch of glue onto that little covered edge. We don't want that. You always move that newsprint out of your way when you're going to make your folds and do that work because it'll stick. I know you feel like it's protecting, but what is it protecting? Your mat? Your mat could be wiped off the newsprint will stick to your book and you don't want that. Okay. So just bone folding that tightly down. And then at those corners, we're gonna do that little roll where we tuck that corner in, tuck that little ear in. And do that little roll in like that. And then glue the fore edge. So I'm trying to get it up against the board and just on that paper. So 
there's no glue here, right under here. There's no glue here. It's just at where it attaches to the book cloth here and then at these edges that we're turning in. This one's a lot easier to fold because this is with the grain. Still use my bone folder for it. down okay so there's one side and we'll do the other one and again I'm just going to so this one I'm going to match I want to match and I've got that wacky spine whip there but I just want to make sure that I'm doing it in the right spot and I can I can actually check that when I'm putting it on but if, if, if I'm looking at, so I'm trying to match this, and if I feel like I need to, I could always make a little bit of a pencil mark and then cover up that pencil mark. So I'm just checking it head and tail that it matches, and then I'll just cover up this pencil mark when I put the book cloth on. They're real small. You probably can't even see it, but I can see them. Sometimes I'll use a white pencil for that because, uh, Sometimes on a dark cloth, I can't see it very well. Okay, so again, we're just going to oops, glue this edge. Make sure I'm on the right side. Yeah, glue that little quarter inch strip. Maybe more like three eighths that I'm doing. This is the back of the book because of that accident. So there's my pencil mark, and then there it is down there. Just going to cover it. I'm just barely covering it. I just like as soon as it disappears, I push it down. And then use the bone folder. And I'm not. I'm trying not to like you know, go back and forth. And even though this is this is Teflon folder, even with a regular bone folder, that's where you can get that burnishing. I know this bone folder probably looks crazy, but I made this one. And that's what I wanted something real narrow like this. That's a piece of uh, bone. I think it's probably a deer. Um, Okay, so it's in place, and then we can do the trimming and mitering. So again, I make my little dimple, and then when I see the dimple, I cut outside of that dimple, like it's almost like the width of the blade, wider, and then 45 approximately. Oh, I almost didn't, didn't even turn in. You can see like that's I should have pulled it down a little bit more. That's part that's the way it is today. Is that gonna turn over? Yeah, it's there, but it's that's a little close. Oh well. <laughs> Oops. All right. I'm gonna do one at a time, one edge at a time. I never did put my brush in the water. I didn't really need to. Just kept working, so didn't need it. Yeah, so this is very helpful to have the bone folder at this point because it just is very resistant to folding. And that side, the shorter side is gonna be even worse. it against the edge of the board. Don't get too crazy up here where the book cloth is. Pull that off and then using my fingers to start and then I come in with the bone folder. 
to walk that over. So you can see that was like three eighths of an inch and it's like, oh, that's a little risky, but it'll be all right because my pages are the same size as the boards or almost, it's fine. I have plenty of material, but that is a risky thing there for it to be that small and it's hard to do. Okay. And then, oh, I forgot to do this little trim. So I'll do it now before I've glued it up. So I don't have so much material in there. Do this four edge and that's it. And then I'll show you how to put on your double stick tape and you can finish the book. I don't like it to flap open like that while I'm working. So that's why I'm keeping it sort of half, you know, quarter closed. And then walk this up. And this is so much easier one because it's with the grain it goes down real, real easy. Um, but then you do want to bone fold at the spine because it won't be sharp. You have a soft four edge and you don't want that. Okay, and then so where you've made your, your little corners, I usually just tap them so they're not super pointy. And there's your finished. It's not completely finished, but there's it's partially finished. So this next step is the last thing. And you know, often what I'll do is before I do this last thing is I will actually let this dry. And what I would normally do is just put it under something that's gonna sort of hold it down. Well, these are a little bit smaller than the four and a quarter. Like, you know, another book, because I don't really want weight. I'm gonna show you this book in a moment, but um. I don't really want weight on it. Maybe a couple of books. These aren't very heavy. Um, a couple of books just to hold, to restrict it because there is glue on there. It's not a big uh, swipe of glue on the cover like we've done with other things with the, with the case uh, where you do want to keep it under weight, restriction and weight. But in this case, I do like to let it dry uh, with something on top of it. So that book is on the very bottom there. You can't see. Um, and just let that dry before, let it get flat, 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 flat before you do this step. Um, but because this is video world and you need to see the demonstration, I'm gonna go ahead and do uh, the double stick tape so that you can see that process. So you guys should, before you do this next part, um, or you can watch it and then just go do it later because you can retain that, however you wanna do it. Um, but I would suggest letting it dry maybe even for just like half an hour, just so it's flat and it's gonna be in the right shape uh, when you do this. Because I don't think it would matter all that much, but I just feel like there is damp. You can kind of feel where the glue, especially right here, I can still feel uh, where that was freshly glued. Um, okay, but what you're gonna do is, and again, you're also opening a book that has just been glued here. Um, but to show you, I'm going to go ahead and do this. So what you're going to do here is there's going to be a piece of double stick tape. That's going to be your end sheet. And then you're going to put between every section, a strip of double stick tape. So when there's a, a fold, that is, there's no double stick tape there because this is what this is, you know, could possibly have printed content, but the next page, this is double stick tape. So then what you'll do you can either do it with your exacto or you can do it with scissors. This is literally going to just do um, double stick tape like this. So you'll put a piece and you don't have to peel it yet. You can just go ahead and lay it down. And you can see I'm coming down just a little bit there. It's not flush with the top. It's like at least an eighth of an inch away. And then same thing at the bottom. I'm just cutting that like that. Okay. So then this one is a fold. This is not an attachment. This is an actual folded folio here. 
So you can imagine there could be an image that goes across right there. The next area is where you would attach and it's you can kind of see because you know like that opens flat this doesn't want to it's fighting being opened that's how you know that that's where the double stick tape goes so what i usually do is i'll go through the book and i'll just put my little bone folder in place and then i'll just come in and do that little application of double stick tape And I'm not even worrying about pe peeling it yet. I just want to make sure I'm staying in order and that I'm not putting it in the wrong place. So I just check it every time and then it's on this one is where I'm going to put it. So I just go through the whole stack. I'm going to go ahead and just do it on camera. It's not that many, um, just so you can see the process. And if you get, like, if you do this where you get a little bit too close to the top, just peel that back. Snip it. Not this one. Yes, this one. So again, right now, because if I did mess up, hopefully I won't, because that's the kind of day I'm having, but um, if I did mess up, that I'm not pushing this down tight, and I told you about how this double stick tape tends to cure over time and it gets more sticky. If I did mess up, I could take it off. If I, because this is a blank book, there's no content. Um, you know, it's easy to get mixed up about which one you're doing, and I'm talking and doing this at the same time. Hopefully, you're not doing that. I am double checking though, because I'm talking between, just to make sure I'm not putting it in the wrong spot. I'm trying to be careful. So this is a, a good use of double stick tape, um, but you don't, you could actually glue it. Um, the only problem with that is that you would need to put wax paper between each layer and then let it dry. Let it dry, let it dry, because otherwise you're going to get a lot of rippling. I mean, if you're fast at gluing, I guess you could do it that way. I, I've always used a double sided tape or there's this material called Goody, which is an adhesive that is a dry adhesive, but it doesn't have a carrier. This actually has double stick tape, has a little piece of film. It's super, super thin, but it is uh, in there. And so the glue can start to separate from that carrier over time and cause the book to come apart. So some people don't like even the archival double-sided tape because of that. And the stuff called Goody is G-U-D-Y, if you're interested in looking at that. And it is a good, I've used it. Um, it's a little bit awkward at first because you, it comes in big rolls and you would have to cut strips. And I mean, I've definitely done it, but uh, you know, it's really if you're trying to avoid using the double stick tape. Another one that you call. And I am taking a second and doing this little trim at the top because I've done, I've skipped that step and thought, oh, it's no big deal. But it actually looks messy at the top of the tape, uh, the top of the book, if you don't get this tape away from the edges like that. So. It, it seems like being overly dramatic, but it's it really does make a difference. So I'm almost done. So this is between the last page and the end sheet. Putting this one on. Keep I don't know, just my hands feel like they're doing it wrong today. And then the last one is the pace down of the book. Okay, so now all the double stick tape is on. And I will go through and just peel each one. So I am bone folding it now because I am going to peel it. 
So what I do is I just close the book and then it's back down. And then I just go through and peel each one. Oh, I'm gonna go back this way because I flipped it over. And I will just take a second and bump fold it to get it to attach to the page that it's on and then peel and then just drop the book closed and then find the next one. Oh, I forgot to bump fold it. It's okay. So I'll probably go through and bump fold everything in the end. So some people think that it's a good idea to not do this and that they can just leave that without the double stick tape being uh, attached. But the problem with that process or, or with not doing this finishing step is that if you don't do this, you're basically, this one is actually done that way. That's why it has so many pages like that. This is basically a perfect binding, which is just a glued binding, but it is not done with a machine. It's not sawed in to and then um, glued and the glue gets down between the saw marks and stuff like that. So it is precarious. It's not snug. And I feel like over time, if you bend this back, the pages are going to start popping out. If you've ever had like a, a pad of paper that's pretty thick, if you really flay that thing out, those pages will just come out because they are just glued at the edge back here. And I don't mean on the spine, but back here. And so I don't, for, for me, I really don't, do not do that for this project. In the future, that's up to you if you want to try to do that. But I warn you that you will probably have problems uh, if, you, if you do that. So just be warned. It sounds so good. It sounds like a great idea, but I feel like the book's going to come apart if you do that. Do not do that for my project. Do it for, if you want to try it, you can do it on your own. But I think I would, I want you to learn this process. And what this book is so great, what's so great about it is you can print on one side of the piece of paper and then the next page is another print that's just on one side. So you, you don't see through to the next page as, as much as you do in a normal, like a, a codex, which is the one that we're going to make next time where there are sewn pages and you have to consider uh, the fronts and backs of everything. This is just on one side of the paper. And so a lot of people that are printmakers and graphic designers like this book because you, you don't have to worry about uh, getting things in order and, and in position, printing and in position and things like that. You don't have to do that. But you have fewer pages because you're attaching two pages together like this, which is what we're doing. You're not printing on the back. So I'm just dropping the book back down. I feel like I'm probably missing, I'm not staying in order very well because I'm talking. I feel like I'm just cutting them off. So I'm just going through and checking. And the only one I haven't done, I think, is this one at the very, the pace down here. So I do need to put a piece of double stick tape <laughs> on this one. And then I'm done with it. And I'll show you the finished book. And then I will quickly show you in this video um, some examples. And I, I think I already kind of did show you some, but like I said in the assignment, I don't have student versions of this book because we mostly, I can't even remember at all putting content in this book because it's a lot of pages and it's really about learning the structure and it's, it's a codex. So yeah, so there's your finished book. And that's it, your drum leaf. Pretty good. It's not too bad. That's fine. I mean, one's, I think one edge is thicker than the other. That, that side looks pretty good. That's not bad. Uh, but yeah, be conscious of that. If you make another one and if you 
make sure it's a little bit thinner than your spine. Really, really make sure that it is. Um, so let me show you these. This book is a blank here. Move this stuff out of the way. Let me put my toothbrush out of the way before I start showing books real quick. So this is a drum leaf as well. Uh, this one, oh, it's a little wonky. Um, but this one ha is a different one because it has some folded pages in it. So that has a fold out. And the way that's done is it just is a trifold, but then it's attached right here at the fold. So it was like a stack of trifolded sheets that are just, they're attached to that single fold on this side. So if that makes sense. And it's hard to see that without content, but that's all that is. It's just a really simple little addition to the finished structure. It's made the exact same way, but it just has that gatefold at every section like that. It really should be like this. Okay, so that's that's just a little bit more complex version of that. So this is uh, some of the handouts that I've given you guys, not handouts, but the PDFs are from this book that I'm working on called Illustrated Bookmaking. And you can see this is not, this is that goody. That's goody right there. It's just not peeled. Um, so this is a printed version of that book. So some of the pages are single folios like this. And then sometimes they have a fold out like that. So this is some of the structures that we've made. It's just inkjet printed. It's really a mock-up, but this is how I'm gonna do this book when I get to it. This is this binding, the drum leaf binding. So anyway, uh, that's a good example. And then here's another. So these are two different sizes. I think this one's even a different size. So it's really whatever the folded text paper size, you cut your boards to that size, you cut your cover materials, um, you know, an inch and a half or an inch taller than whatever your finished height is. Um, then you measure from the book to get your spine pieces. And then this could be, you know, maybe a quarter inch wider than the the width of the board. I mean, also all the materials are based off of that finished size. Here's the one that we just made. So this is one at this size. So this is a, yeah, this is one that has same books in it, but it's done differently. You can do different things because as long as you have that fold in the back, you see that one's really tight, that's nice. See how much better that looks when it's just really clean. And so that's fine. I can feel it in there. It's like, I, I think you could go a 16th of an inch smaller and you'd still be all right. The only thing is if you go too small, then it might push out, like it'll look weird and wedge shape in this direction instead of that direction. So, you know, it just takes a, some trial and error to get it. And if you were gonna make an addition, you would get that worked out. And, uh, you know, that means you're gonna make more than one copy you would figure that out and make it, that's what a mock-up is for, is to figure those things out. And then for the addition, you would go, oh yeah, I got to cut that a 16th of an inch. So all your spines would be small, smaller than this because you would have worked it out in your mock-up. So but yeah, that's what it's good for is printing on one side of the paper. And you can see in this one, I like this version because it has some line, it's these drawings, but they're done in just a gray outline on the back of the paper, on the back of that page. So then you get to see that when you open up to the drawing on the inside. Oh, this one's even longer. This has got like a double gatefold on it. So yeah, this is something that I'm working on. I've done these drawings over the years for this class and I'm working on a publication for it. Yeah, okay, so that's that's the drum leaf binding. There you go. All right. Okay. Thanks guys.